In this video, we are going to finish up our discussion of homogeneous polar DEs uh, by showing you one other version of the method. It's not much different. It all feels the same. Um, but here it is. We have this crazy looking DE. So we have some LNs we're going to work on for sure. Um, so we are, we're going to let u equal x over y, um, which tells me that x is equal to u y. Right, we're going to follow the same from the last video. This means dx is equal to u dy plus y du. And we're going to plug everything in. Everything's in the right form that we have above there. Um, so let's do so. dy dx. Um, well, maybe actually we should use the other method, I really think. Um, I think we should use dx over... Ooh, that causes a problem, doesn't it? So, okay, we actually have to take this route. Hopefully you can see what I am talking about here is that if I want to do, if I want to dy dx, I have an issue right here with trying to figure out dy dx. I'd have to manipulate the equation quite a bit. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just take the equation that we have above and I'll show you how to feel better about it. x plus x ln of x over y, that whole thing to the fourth, dy equals y times ln x over y to the fourth dx. Now that replacement's not going to feel so crazy. So this is dx u dy plus y du. Make all our adjustments. Uh, everywhere there is an x, I have to put a ui. All right, I can replace. Thankfully, these x over y's with just a u. dy is something I can have. That's okay. But dx, I'm going to go ahead and replace. I got y times l. Oh, we need to, y wasn't the replacement. Um, then I got another ln of u here. This one to the fourth power. And then now I replace this dx with u dy plus y du. Right, let's multiply everything out. This, um, I know it feels weird. We actually should probably write it like this. Um, I can take a ui out of that. Um, we uh, notice ln of u to the fourth is on both sides. Let's take that out of our equations. So I'm going to rewrite. I got ui. Uh, I got two ui because, oh, we can't divide. Okay, so let's be careful. And the way the original problem is written, we don't have these parentheses here. This x is not times, it's not, it's not like this. So we can't do that. Okay, so but I can start putting things together. I'm going to distribute the right side. Let's do that. We'll leave this alone. So we get ui plus ui times ln of u to the fourth. I'm going to start trying to condense it so it's not so much to write. dy equals, and then we're going to distribute this stuff. Uh, we get uh, ui, ui um, ln to the fourth, ln u to the fourth times uh, dy, that was this distributing, and then we have to do it this way, so we get plus, we get y squared ln u to the fourth uh, d, and then that whole thing du. All right, so we can combine our dy's. Notice that when we combine them, that ln to the fourth, the u, that whole term, this whole term, I'm going to minus this term from the other side with that dy. It's going to combine with this dy and subtract that out. So we're just going to get a ui times dy equals, all right, we get um, the rest of that over there. y squared ln u to the fourth du. Okay, so let's see what we have now. We have u's and y's. And maybe we can separate. It looks like we can. So I'm going to get the u's to the right side. So we get ln of u to the fourth power over u, du. And then on the right side, I'm going to divide by y squared. This gets me 1 over y dy. Not so bad once we get down to that. This is separable. I can go ahead and take my integral. And that substitution made that nasty problem not too horrible. So there's my do you, this is a nice, easy L and a Y. The right-hand side, though, let's do an M substitution. We can't do U because it's already U. N, M is L N of U. So DM is 1 over U, DU. 
Well, that's the rest of that whole thing. So this is actually equal to u to the uh, m, sorry, m to the fourth dm. So this is m to the fifth over five. So I'm going to write that in blue. Um, I got a one fifth, and then I replace it with m. And then I have a plus C1. I replace U. U was a X over Y, if I believe. Yeah, X over Y. So I got LN, X over Y, to the fifth, plus C1. And I think we should leave it. Um, Actually, this cleans up really nicely. Never mind, let's keep going. I got that equals the one-fifth can go to that power, meaning that I just get a one in the power which means I have that, plus C1. I now take both sides. Um, I put E to both sides. It's always kind of tricky to say that phrase. Uh, I got X over Y, uh, and then I got E to the C1. I can split that with that plus sign. So I get absolute value of Y equals LN, oh, big C, that constant. That's what this is. We'll just call that a constant now, right? Because it's just a, E to some constant is a constant. And then I get, x over y. Well, that gets me y equals plus or minus x over y, and this gives me y squared equals plus or minus x. All that work for that function, um, and it cleans up really nicely. So uh, this would be a great answer. Uh, oh, we lost our c, didn't we? So we get a cx. Okay, there we go. And there's my solution. Um, I It's bothering me that it doesn't look. All right, plus or minus C times X. There we go. Okay, so there is my answer. Um, that wraps up homogeneous polar. Um, the method just doesn't get much more difficult than this. I think the difficulties lie within the algebra, of course, right? That's calculus in a nutshell. Um, I would do the practice problems. I do them a few times, rework these problems. It's really just getting used to the method and the replacements and then getting used to the algebraic tricks that work with logarithms and stuff like that.